And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Here is a letter to an advice column of all places. The online magazine Slate, as in Slate.com. They have an advice column called Dear Prudence. And here is the letter that a listener plucked out of Dear Prudence and emailed to me. Dear Prudence, by the way, see if this in any way resembles anything that's happened to you. Dear Prudence, my wife and I have been married for more than a decade and have two young children. Recently, I have suggested ideas aimed at spicing up our sex life. These are not wild suggestions, and they involve just us. For example, I have seen couples on TV have sex with the woman sitting on a running washing machine. By the way, I've read this line maybe about 20 times as I've read this over to read it on the air. When you just read it out like that, it sounds so boring. <laughs> Honey, can we have sex on top of a running washing machine? Here, I'll press the spin cycle and you get on top, okay? <sighs> mm. So he says, uh, I've seen couples on TV have sex with the woman sitting on a running washing machine. Like I said, nothing overly wild. My wife always responds that she's not interested. However, it's the reason that she gives that gets to me. Here's what she'll say. I did that with someone else before I met you. It wasn't that great. <laughs> He says, I have an issue with the fact that she was willing to do these things with another man and is unwilling to do them with her husband. I have expressed why this hurts. Her response is to laugh it off and say something like, you had your chance before you met me. You should have done it then. Boy, I'm not complaining about the number of times we have sex. It's just that I'm having difficulty dealing with her unwillingness to do with me Things she did with other men. What should I do? I don't really care what Prudence's opinion is. Let us take a look, though, at uh, some of the things he said here. Um, first of all, first and foremost, you know, why would somebody not be interested in doing something in bed with their husband? Now, I understand if there's pain involved or extreme danger we're not talking about that couldn't you like you know because you got your partner really excited could you like try to do what they want you to do could you give it a little shot eh? but to say that you already did something with someone else before you met uh, <laughs> the person you're with now and that it wasn't that great how stupid is that Maybe the person you were with was an incompetent lover. Maybe the person didn't know how to do it. Maybe the person doesn't uh, know how to get the job done. Maybe if you tried doing it with me, I'd, I'd get the job done, and maybe uh, the other guy couldn't. It's just stupid. And, and by the way, this talk that he recounts here, 
here are, you know, exhibits A, B, C, D, and E. Why not to get married right here? You're sitting there begging your wife to get up on the running washing machine, and she says, no, I already did that. Are you kidding me? And I love that other line. You've had your chance before you met me. You should have done it then. Well, guess what? You are confirming everything I believe about marriage and everything I have said about marriage, and that is that women want to, quote, unquote, settle down with Poindexter. Yes, you should have had all your fun before you got here because there's not going to be any passion from now on. From now on, you are enslaved. You're a sperm donor and a human wallet. That is what you now are. If you wanted to have sex on top of the washing machine, you should have done it while you were single. Outrageous. Outrageous. I have told uh, the story I'm about to tell. I've told it before, but I'll tell it in this context. One of the four wives, I won't say which one, one of the four, because they all love to sue. One of the four, when I got with her, I thought to myself, here's why I like this chick. She's done everything with everyone. In other words, she'll do anything. Anything. I mean, this is somebody who had lived with, like, at least one rock star. <laughs> somebody who had uh, been with uh, various well-known people with big libidos and uh, people who had done outrageous stuff. And, I'm, you know, the thing is, I'm a big boy. I'm not jealous of what you've done in the past. You know what I'm saying? I, I am completely secure about that. I have my own past. And I'm completely comfortable with whatever you did in your past. Okay? But uh, here's the thing. I got with this woman. And I would say, let's do X, whatever it is. Nowadays, you can't describe this stuff on the radio, but trust me. I said, all right, let's do something really, you know, off the uh, deep end here. Okay, let's try this. Now, instead of saying no, she would, oh, no, she never said no. No, no, no. Here's what she would say. She'd say, okay. I mean, I've done it before, but if you want to, here you go. And like she'd like, you know, just, you know, spread her legs or whatever. And then <laughs> look completely bored by the whole concept. And it didn't matter what I suggested. She would tell me that she, she'd not only tell me that she did it before, but she would make it sound so boring. I would start to lose interest. All right. If you want to, I've already done it, but you have at it. She was the type of, if she was too tired to have sex, she'd never say no. She'd go, well, you go ahead. If I fall asleep, you just finish up without me. This was her attitude. Now, sometimes we did have wild sex, and sometimes it was really, really good. But many times she would be like, man, you think that's creative? I've already done that. <laughs> she, she had to let me know that she'd already done stuff. By the way, what I wasn't telling her is, in some cases, I'd already done this stuff. And I wanted to do it again. So I didn't go, I didn't say to her, hey, you know, with my ex-wife, we used to do uh, A, B, and C. So how about you and I do A, B, and C? Because I really liked A, B, and C. I just said, hey, why don't we try this? But she had to get it in. She had to let me know that she'd already done those things before. And okay, I'm like completely jaded. Here you go. Go right ahead, whatever you want. She never said no to anything. But she also rarely exhibited any enthusiasm for anything either. You know what I'm saying? So now we read about this guy who writes into an advice column. Maybe this is her. <laughs> Maybe he married her. Married for more than a decade as children. Uh, this could be her. Who knows? Yes, I did it with someone else before I met you. It wasn't that great. Oh, how pathetic is it when you're married? You know, 
I done a show about this, so I'm not going to dwell on it. But, you know, it's one thing to just spontaneously start humping and pumping with somebody who's really hot and they're sitting next to you and you're feeling it and you just go for it. But then when you get to that point in a relationship, you know the point I'm talking about. Where you're saying, come on, honey, why don't you roll over? Let's try it another way. Oh, she does, you know, you're just lucky to be getting it. And you ever see those uh, beaten dogs and some of the beaten cats who go to like, you know, one of those sex stores, you know, like Hustler Hollywood or the Pleasure Chest. Here are these people. Look around and see all the people who are bored in their relationships, okay? Looking at lingerie or oils or creams or whatever it's like you know there was a time you didn't need oil or cream to get hot you didn't need lingerie you just did it it was just great and now you have to add whips and chains and handcuffs and fur line handcuffs or whatever uh just to get excited about this person which is why i say maybe a long-term monogamous relationship doesn't work with most people how many of you go to the sex toy shop and pick up another item? Honey, I got something else in the store today. Oh, it kills me. See this oil? You rub it on and it gets warm. Oh, Jesus Christ, save me. I think of those people who are married or have been together a long time. Hey, how about that uh, governor of New York State? The new governor, David Patterson. Yeah. When he and his wife really wanted to get wild, they would uh, check into the Days Inn on 94th and Broadway. <laughs> Imagine your sex life is so boring that it would seem exciting to check into the Days Inn. Oh, Dean, you're right, too. The Madonna Inn. The Madonna Inn, not far from my, my new northern compound. You know about the Madonna Inn, Art? It's been there forever. The Madonna Inn. Look it up. They got a website. The Madonna Inn is a hotel. I, it, it looks like it goes back to like the 60s, or maybe the 50s. And every room is a different theme. And it comes complete with, uh, you know, like whips and chains. Or like it has, it has one room called the caveman room where like a fake cave and you 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 wear loin matching loin cloths and you run after each other you know if you're checking into the Madonna inn you might as well just give up it's over okay if i need to check into the cowboy and indian room at the Madonna inn it is over you know just stick a fork in me it's done i'm done Ugh. So, uh, what do you think about this letter? What do you think about it? The woman who says, oh, I did it with someone else before I met you. It wasn't that great. Have you ever been with a person like that? Let's say you're that guy. It's time to go, right? I mean, come on. I talk about this all the time. When do you leave? How do you leave? Here is an example of, A, why you don't want to be in a long-term relationship. <laughs> And be an example of when it's, if you're in one, when it's time to go. This is time to go, pal. Don't you agree? Tom Likas. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5-800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. It all started with... A letter to an advice column from a woman who's been married for over 10 years, has two young kids, and now wants to spice up her sex life. Uh, you know, uh, again. I just can't accept this idea that you got to be with somebody until there's absolutely no passion, until it's like a, an orange and you squeezed every drop of juice out of it. And pretty much just lay your head down on top of the peel. That's really all you're going to have left. I, I can't do it. I can't do it. Honey, I've seen people on TV having sex on top of a washing machine. Let's try that. <laughs> How far have you sunk? 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Anne on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are 
are you? Great. Actually, I'm right in front of my kids' uh, school. I'm about to pick them up, but I just have to call you in because I've been, um, I've known my husband for 10 years, married for five. I have two little ones. And my husband, whatever he wants, I give it 100% plus. And I'm happy and gladly and very grateful that I have such a wonderful husband. I mean, I would never, ever dare even think the craziest mind to say something so ridiculous like this lady. She is just insanely ridiculous. <laughs> it's insane. I can't imagine. Oh, my gosh. It's like with my husband. He's, he's the one, and I'll do anything that he wants. He's the best. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe a woman married to say something like that to the husband. She should be glad she even get any. She's, I mean, she's lucky she's even married, first of all, that somebody would marry her. I don't know. Well, and the thing is, not just married her, but, like, is paying the cost of having two children, and, you know, he goes to work every day, I'm stays not, around I'm to be mom. there. I'm a, I'm a full-time mom. I mean, I'm a, no, I'm sorry. I'm a, I work full-time, and I... I take care of the kids and everything. I clean the house. I take care of everything. Well, increasingly, I, increasingly, with all these stories about starter husbands and stories like this one here that we're reading, I mean, th there are a lot of women out there who think, well, you have all your passion and you have all your hot times with people you have one night stands with or brief encounters with, and then you get married to somebody, and then you're just supposed to go back to missionary style sex. No, no. That's just wrong. And yeah, we just, you know. Maybe I'm just lucky because I'm married to an Italian guy who's just fantastic in every way. I can't complain. Yeah. And he's a traditional guy, granted, but this is exactly that the marriage should be. I mean, it's it should be just 50-50. I mean, the woman has to do whatever it is to please her husband. Or get out. Exactly. Why you get married in the first place? My God. I'm telling you why women get married. They get married so they find somebody who could be a sperm donor and a human wallet. No, that's just wrong. I'm sorry. I don't agree with that. There's a lot that's of that out wrong. there. I know. I mean, I know. I mean, the, most of the time when I listen to you, I laugh about it. Granted that I don't, you know, agree on a lot of things. But this today, I had to call in because I completely agree with you. And everything that you said about this lady, it's just crazy. Mm-hmm. That's just unacceptable. It's very it's common. It's very common. For me, as a woman, I mean, I do my fair, more than fair share. I go to work. I make sure I make the money. I bring in the money as well as my husband does. I share that load. I don't want to be a free loader, for example. And in addition, I want to maintain to be a good wife and provide whatever it is. And he does the same, both equally. And that's how marriage should be. Well, <laughs> uh, it seems to me that it's not that way. But I thank you for the call, Ann. one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Here comes Brenda on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I don't know if you have to ask me a question first. Well, you, I'm kind well, of you, similar... you called me. Well, I'm, I'm in a similar marriage. I've been married two years, and there's no passion. There's no heat. And I happen to be out on a job, and I met somebody else, and it's very hot. It's very hot. And me and my husband, we have no children together. I have some from a previous marriage, but we don't have any, and I don't see our future going anywhere. Why do you stay with it? Um, It's coming to that point where I just, it, it feels funny because this is my third marriage. and I yeah, So you're know. seeing a pattern developing here? Uh, no, because each one was different. Each one was totally different and why I No, but see, each one was a marriage. Let's start with that. <laughs> <laughs> that they was the only thing they had in common. Yeah, but guess what? That See, I say the uh, institution of marriage is outdated, it's broken, it's unfixable. Right. Because people, as I always say, people are only as faithful as their options. Well, a ring on your finger doesn't mean that you have a chastity belt on. Oh, on the contrary. Uh, many people want you more when you have a ring. Oh, definitely. It doesn't matter if you're married or not. When there's an attraction, there's an attraction. 
Right. So, uh, by the way, did you start banging other guys on the side of the first two marriages or just this one? No, just this one. First time you've ever done But you've only been with them two years. Yeah, I know. It sucks. How many kids do you have? I have four. By how many fathers? Um, I have two by my first husband, two by my second. Mm-hmm. And now, and I got totally fixed after the last one, so now I'm just having fun. Right. Yeah. So do you get married for passion, or do you get married because this guy can help you support four kids? Um, I no, I don't need his support. I I don't I don't receive. So if there's no passion, and you don't need his money, why did you marry him? Um, because everybody was telling me he was a good guy. That's it. Yeah. Not enough. Yeah. No, it wasn't. It really wasn't, and I think I stay with him because I, I feel like um, I, I feel what how everybody else is going to feel. Oh my God, she got married it did, in the last two years. Poor schmuck, you know. I, I just it's one. Why don't you just stop getting married? Oh, definitely. I mean, why don't you divorce him and then just be done with it? That's what I was thinking because I'm not. I only have one more year here in California, and then I'm gone, and I just don't see him going. Where are you going? I'm um, Ohio. I bought property in Ohio. And why, what is it about one year? Um, I'll, I'll have my uh, retirement in with my, my previous employment. You're, you're 38 years old? Yes. And what are you retiring from? Um, I'm actually a city bus driver. And you can retire at 39 with a full pension? Um, no, not a full, but a partial, but it's okay. I just don't, I, it's kind of like, I want to get out of California, and I've just bided my time, and I figured, well, I'll just put my pen in, and then I'm gone. So why don't you get the divorce done now? Do you want to be flying back and forth from Ohio to testify? Um, no, I mean, there's nothing really that we have together, so I don't have that, that issue. And if, and if I wanted a divorce, he'd just basically roll over. He rolls over for anything. And Except I sex. problem. Yeah, well, he'll roll over for that, but it's not good. And, and that's the sad part. And was it ever good? Yeah, it was good, but now it's just becoming a routine. Everything's routine. You know what he's going to do just before he does it. Right. Yeah. It's Which always routine. is the basic flaw in marriage and long-term relationships. Yes. And sometimes you just need something to just get the heat of the moment up and and some people have that their entire lives they know what they're doing and they enjoy doing it but but why can... did you go out and marry somebody who wasn't great in the sack clearly oh, sex is important to you no it's very important to me and like i said he was great he did everything i wanted because i showed him what to do i showed him what yeah, i yeah but if you had to show him what to do what was the point of that uh well, some guys need that. Yeah, Most but guess what? That. Those guys should be with women who have less experience. Well, women, who, how about women who don't like sex that much? Let them. Let those people hook up. <laughs> oh God! Why are you with somebody like that? Well, you figured if you teach them what to do, they got it down. They it know doesn't. To do. No, you know what? Well, to me, can I tell you something? Sex is a matter of trial and error. It's a matter of doing whatever you dare to do, remembering the stuff that worked well, and then continuing to do more of that. Yes. If somebody has to walk in and teach you like they're teaching you how to do Pilates, I don't think it's the same. We're talking about passion and lust here. I don't think that can be taught. You either are a passionate, lustful person or you're not. You got a point there. I don't think you can teach that. I, just like I don't think you can teach someone to be a comedian, or or teach somebody to be a, 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 a another kind of entertainer. Teach somebody to be a singer. You know, you have to have some basic talent and passion for it before you can be, you know, guided or instructed in any way. You know, and, and it's true what you're saying. Everything's true, and I think maybe earlier on in my life I didn't understand passion. I didn't understand it until I hooked up with this one. You see, I, I, I happen to believe that passion is something that inhabits every part of your life. People who are passionate about cooking, passionate about drinking, passionate about, I don't know, smoking pot, passionate about their work, they are passionate, okay? It is not an accident 
that politicians like Elliot Spitzer, a very ambitious individual, also have a voracious sexual appetite. Mm -hmm. And then you got the guys who are just happy to have a nine to five job and they're very reliable and they show up at home on time. People don't compartmentalize their lives. Right. If you want somebody who's hot in the sack, you have to have somebody who's a little dangerous or a little edgy or has some little something going on other than reliability and dependability. Leave that to the Maytag repairman. Oh, I like that one. But, but you see what I'm saying? A lot of people like you who have children tend to pick the safest, nicest guys. You just said you married him because people said he was a nice guy. Yeah. But you see, he's a nice guy in the sack, too. Yeah. Because people, people who are nice guys are nice guys all the time. See, I'm a complete jerk. No, you're not. Oh, you're yeah. No. <laughs> I've listened to you for I'm an like five years. No, I'm an a-hole. Let me tell you. If I get you in the sack, I'm going to slap you around a little bit. <laughs> uh, but you know what? You know what you No want. permanent you bruising or anything. You're just going to, you know. Uh, and sometimes uh, you're going to have a date with me and I'm not going to show up. Oh, yeah. You sound like me. Yeah, but you see, look you, look how you are in the sack. Uh-huh. So, you see, I, I really do think this is something people need to think about. You can't separate the behavior. There, there, there are very few people who are a librarian during the day who they let their hair down and they're wild monsters in the sack. Right. Most people who are anal retentive at the office are anal retentive everywhere. People who are nice guys are nice guys everywhere. You know, but what's weird is the one that I'm seeing now, he is like, Okay, he has his gentleman skills, he has that, and then the minute you turn around, he slams you up on the wall. Which, of course, a nice guy's not going to do that. No, no. Not, not in the slightest. So you see, part of the problem with you picking somebody to love is that you're a parent and you were trying to pick somebody who'd be good as a parent. That and the skill set you're looking for for a parent isn't necessarily the skill set that you look for as a lover. And he's not that good of a parenting skill now than he was before. It's like once he got in and uh, now he's just a nine to five person, like what you said, and he'll come home and, and sit around and the gut's getting a little bit bigger and that's not attractive at all. And uh, he just he doesn't work out. He doesn't do anything unless you put your foot up his butt to get it done. Right. And, but he's a nice guy. Yeah. But you and see, he, he's no different than he was when you met him. It's just that for whatever reason, you're hooked on getting married. Uh, by the way, I got married four times. I'm not criticizing you for it. I'm just saying I was hooked on it. You're hooked on it. For some reason, you think it's necessary, so you keep doing it, and then you keep failing it. And that's why I say one thing all the marriages had in common is that they were all marriages. Maybe yeah. that's the problem. So I shouldn't feel bad about just dumping him? Hey, look, you shouldn't feel bad. Here's what you should feel bad about, and then get over it. Um, you 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 essentially married the wrong guy for the wrong reasons, and now the longer you stay with him, the more you're compounding your mistake. Yeah, it's like I, the joke. Even... It's like huh? the joke. It was like the joker. It's like the thing I say about you know when you buy a stock. Uh -huh. You know you you buy a stock at a hundred, and then it drops to eighty, uh -huh. and then it drops to sixty. And then it drops to 40. You say to the person, why don't you sell that stock? And they say, well, I've got so much invested in it now. Right. And then you watch it go all the way down to zero. Yeah. That no, wouldn't be a good idea, would it? No, it's kind of like the, the reason they cheaper to keep her. But that's what you're doing now. Wow. And so let me ask you this one question. When you have a guy and he has the passion, is it just for the beginning? Maybe, maybe not. But you know what? If you're not married to him, when the passion goes, so do you. By the way, I think the minute you start getting tied down and you start getting checks with your names printed on it and you start getting your mail at his address or him at your address or whatever, and you get all excited about that stuff, instead of being excited about being slammed up against the wall, the, the, the passion is gone. It's done at that time. Oh, so what you need to do is it, the idea that somebody could leave at any time is what keeps it hot.
People are there because they want to be there, not because they're roped in or chained in or handcuffed in. They are there because it's hot. When it stops being hot, there's no reason to be there. Gotcha. And so that's how I look at it now. So you don't ever plan on getting married again? It's not the plan. Not in the plan? It's not in the plan. Okay. And, and, and the thing is, I don't need to be married. What do I need to be married for? I don't even have kids. What do I need it for? Yeah, because I think once I hit, I think it was 36, 37, because um, I'll be 39 here in two more months. And it's like now I've gotten to the point in my life where it's like, okay, this is what I want, and I'm not ashamed or, you know, afraid to admit it, and I'll just go out there and get it. Well, then, but when it comes to this, it's like, ugh, it's, I still have a heart, you know, about hurting somebody else. Yeah, but the, the time to think about that was when you were marrying the wrong guy, not two years after that. Yeah. So, you you know, you you, you feel bad about it because in reality, you, you know, you were misguided in marrying this guy in the first place. But do you want to make it worse by keeping around for five or ten years, living the secret life, running the risk of getting caught? Yeah. How no, bad is he going to feel then? That's true. Because it, it's like he doesn't even have a clue. Because I, I also because he's a nice guy. Yeah, I drive limousine on the weekends just because the money's there and it gets me away from the house. And, and I love the scene. I love the nightlife. And so I could just basically say, hey, I've got a job tonight and come home three or four in the morning. And he's such a nice guy, he'd never even check on you. No. And then no. you resent him for that. Yeah. He's an idiot. Well, but you picked him there. I know. He's my idiot. You picked an idiot. Now, you need to fix it. Yeah, I do. And let the feelings go away. Darling, there were no feelings in the first place. You feel sorry for him, like if you adopted a cocker spaniel who nips at people. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Uh, you know what? I'm not even upset about it. I'm just not upset about not wanting to be with him anymore. So, it's, uh, darling, it's time to go. Yeah, you're right. It's time to go. Thank you. Thank you. Tom Like It. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Like It. This hour, in case you're just joining us, we started off with an email that was sent to an advice column. At Slate.com called Dear Prudence. Well, the letter went like this. Dear Prudence, my wife and I have been married for more than a decade and have two young children. Recently, I have suggested ideas aimed at spicing up our sex life. Oh, boy. These are not wild suggestions and they involve just us. For example, I've seen couples on TV have sex with the woman sitting on a running washing machine. Like I said, nothing overly wild. My wife always responds that she's not interested. However, it's the reason that she gives that gets to me. She says, I did it with someone else before I met you. It wasn't that great. I have an issue with the fact that she was willing to do these things with another man and is unwilling to do them with her husband. I have expressed why this hurts. Her response is to laugh it off and say something like, you had your chance before you met me, you should have done it then. I'm not complaining about the number of times we have sex. It's just that I'm having difficulty dealing with her unwillingness to do with me the things that she did with other men. What should I do? Yikes. Just the idea of being married 10 years and then having to, quote unquote, spice up your sex life. Oh, oh, you're killing me. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. If you're calling from anywhere in the world other than the United States, we have an international number now. You can use it if you're listening on the Internet, for example. You can call us at this number, 323-520-6211. That's 32. Of course, the country code for the United States is 1, because we invented the goddamn telephone, so we reserve 1 for ourselves. That was our invention. We did that. So you just uh, dial 1 and then the area code 323-520-6211. That's the number you can call me from anywhere in the world. Anywhere. Let's say hello to uh, Scott on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. You know, first got to say thank you. You've brought so much joy to my life, sir. That's my job. Dude, you've given me the roadmap to go over the wall. 
get in my neighbor's yard and get my testicles out of the tree. Uh, I'd be married nine years if uh, we made it to July. And why her attorney didn't tell her to stick around another year so she could, you know, bleed me for the rest of my life, I don't know, but I don't care. My wife wouldn't so much as put on a set of lingerie, and I've asked and asked and asked. I'm treated like a dog. And it's when I went and got my balls out of the tree that she started taking notice, and it was too late. What'd she do when she noticed that you were not going to accept it? Uh, she just freaked out and tried all kinds of stuff, and by then I was already gone. So let me guess. Oh, oh, wait. I've been in that situation. Did she find the uh, lingerie counter after that? Oh, no. She found the st All of a sudden, the lingerie I've given her over the years or that she's gone to buy, all of a sudden it just came out of nowhere. Yeah. And I'm like, what? what is it? Is it friggin' Halloween? I don't understand because now that I'm out the door, now you're putting the stuff on? Uh, you know, Tom, what is the deal? Oh, it's pathetic. I imagine women standing there in some see-through negligee as you're walking out the door with your suitcases in hand. It's like, how pathetic can that get? That's right. That's when she's made the roast. You know, I tell my friends, there's a couple of my buddies getting ready to get married. I'm like, why would you ruin a perfectly good relationship and get married. It's like you say all the time, here's the thing, and here's the, th I get this from listening to the show and of course living it myself. As soon as they get comfortable and they've got your balls in a jar, it's over, man. You might as well make huevos rancheros every Sunday for the whole block. That's right. You know, so I don't want to take a lot of time. It's an amazing topic. You hit home today, man. I love you. Thanks for the joy. You are the bomb. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate the call. He's getting the hell out of Dodge. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Steve on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how you doing? I'm okay. Long time listener. Thank you. I just got to say for one, <clears throat> great topic. I'm in the same boat except for I'm 30 years old. My wife's 25, and she's a freaking prude, dude. I will tell you right now, before we got married, it's great. After, I'm telling you, women say I do to say I don't have to anymore. On top of it all, they're so dumb. They're naive. They're just, seriously, they should be their own species because they're the stupidest people in the freaking world. Well, of course, she was that stupid. She wouldn't have your name on the dotted line of that marriage contract. Yeah, hey, I got you there. You're not there. that stupid. What's that? She's not that stupid. She's got her claws into everything you earn now. Oh, yeah, she does. Plus, we got three kids, which, don't get me wrong, I love my kids, think they're great. But talking about a boring relationship, I'm telling you, it's the same freaking thing every night. Well, why do you stay? Wrong. Wait, wait, why do you stay there? Because I got three kids. Yeah, why couldn't you uh, get an apartment in the neighborhood and just uh, hang around? Yeah, that's, that's uh, I don't know, she, uh, you know, she'll probably take me for everything I have. Well, she's going to take you for the longer you're married, the more she can take you for. Keep in mind, she not only gets 50% of everything you made today, but for every two days you stay, she gets another day of vagina money. Yeah. Now, now, now I was told if they, if they can't get alimony if they, if they work, correct? Well, that varies too. You need to talk to an attorney. Because if she makes less money than you do, they still get alimony sometimes. So we're screwed either way. Well, the thing is, the sooner you get out, the less vagina money you pay. If I were you, and at least check my options with an attorney, baby. It's the Tom Likish.